Hi, just wanted to give you a, a quick start before we uh, get into turning today. Uh, some stickers, some new stickers that I've gotten in. I've been a little lax, let a couple of them sit on the shelf uh, for a few days, uh, but uh, we've gotten them in. And I want to share with you the folks who have, who have done a sticker swap with me. First, there's Mike at Scenic City Woodworking. He's doing a great job. You want to check in on him. Uh, for a, a relatively new turner, he's doing a great job. Uh, and I tell you what, his stuff is just, it looks great. So you want to check in on him. Then there's Louie. Louie at uh, <laughs> Woodworking 220-7. Uh, he's doing a great job. Uh, even wrote a little note on the back of his sticker there. And thank you, Louie. Appreciate your sticker. And I look forward to seeing more from your shop. Then there's, uh, everybody knows this guy, Doug at Pole Barn Productions. Uh, Doug is doing uh, some great work up in the great north. Uh, it's getting cold up there already, but uh, he's doing some great stuff. And uh, if you like to, to see the resin work, uh, he does some hybrid as well as straight resin. Uh, either way, he does great work and you want to see some of that. And then uh, Jennifer, Jennifer's Creations. Jennifer, uh sent me a message the other day. Hey, you want to do a sticker swap? Sure, absolutely. So she's uh, uh, sent hers to me. I've sent mine to her. And uh, Jennifer, I look forward to seeing even more of your of your work uh, in the days to come. All right. Welcome once again to the workshop of Wood Spun Round. I'm Doug. I'm glad to have you with me today. Uh, I've got a piece of two by eight construction pine. This was uh, some scrap, some throw out from a construction site, actually. Um, I have uh, cut it so that I uh, have it perfectly square. I've taken off the factory edges, those rounded edges that it usually comes with. So these are nice and sharp on both sides. And it's square. Uh, I've marked the center. I've turned a circle or I've drawn a circle around it. I'm going to go ahead and put it in my, uh, on my lathe, putting it uh, using a live center. On the tailstock side using just the face of my chuck on the headstock side first thing I'm going to do well I've turned that or excuse me I've drawn the circle I've also marked down a quarter inch this is the top side I've, I've come down a quarter of an inch on all four corners so that I can see that as I'm turning I'm going to turn the bottom up to that I, I don't I want to leave those blue lines on all four corners. It's there on all four corners. It's a reference point for me. That's as deep as I want to go. I'm going to take a pencil. I'm going to mark a second line. I'm going to come over about an inch so I can find my ruler. There we go. We'll come over, not an inch, I think three quarter. Three quarters of an inch will be far enough. That will, that will uh, designate my, the foot of this plate. I was asked to do a series of plates for the, the store where I am I display my work and so uh, when I was there last week I mentioned doing some square plates and she thought that was a great idea so uh, you know anybody can turn around one I'm going to venture a stab at making a whole series of square plates all right everything is free and clear lathe is turned down to 495 we're going to start there and we'll speed it up. Uh, we'll end up going up at a pretty good clip uh, so that these corners are easier to turn. All right, we are free and clear. Sixteen forty-five. Shield down.
stop there, turn my tool rest just a bit. Working on up this corner toward the, I've got my foot established, got my basic curve, but I've got to turn this around. I have to turn this corner, make it a nice smooth curve. It'll be a, a, a bit of an OG curve all the way up. getting relatively close. I've got a little bit of a ledge right here where I've made a secondary cut. But I've got a primary cut up here. Got to take about half of that off. And I want to, I think, let me move my tool rest just again. I'm gonna go against the grain just a little bit. Um, because I want to get this curve, I want it nice and smooth, and I'm going to work it back toward that mark. Quite there, we're getting there, we're real close. Probably one more pass. We got I think we're close oh yeah my corners are perfect right where I want them to be got just a little bit of a lump you may be able to see it ever so slight not gonna take much in fact I want to use a pull cut to get rid of it
instead of pull cut it wasn't a pull cut it was a shear scrape uh, smooth that curve out smooth the surface out got a bit of sanding to do out here but that'll sand real nice with this pine all right let's get a parting tool and establish my recess is just a touch low for that it's a little specialty scraper that I made out of a planer blade I was just a little below center there so There we go. All right, now it's time for a little sanding. And I'll bring you back when we get done with that part of it. We have sanded. I've pulled my tailstock back. I've gotten rid of the uh, live center. Bring my tool, tool rest back around. I wanna move my vacuum rig away a bit so that I have plenty of room. Give this a spin. We're in great shape. I had slowed this the lathe down for the sanding. I don't want to sand it breakneck speed. Um, so it's at 850 now. We're going to speed it back up. Back up to about 1600 or so. Maybe a little higher. There's 1850. I've got to start with the outside and work my way in because if I don't, these wings are going to get awfully uh, flimsy on me. Could start vibrating.
done with these, uh, anything with a wing like this, you got to stop and check real often. We're getting close out here on the corner. And that's, that's, I've actually got this curve started really uh, uh, nice and parallel. What I'm trying to do is watch this outside edge as I turn so that I can see, um, make sure I've got everything going parallel. So I got to take a little more out so that I can work my way down a little further. I'm at a place now where these wings have just a yeah they've all four got just a little bitty place where it's flat um, I'm gonna stop on the corner I'm not gonna go any further and you can see I've got this going nice and parallel to about there and then it gets fatter all the way down and I want this parallel all the way so got to take a little more of the center out so I can work my way on down again getting there and see it gets right there it starts getting fatter right there it's on this side uh, so I still got a little bit but I'm getting close I'm getting close at least I've got my inner circle inside this outer edge and so I'm, I'm still in good shape probably need to go ahead and do a shear scrape now before this gets any thinner uh, further in I don't want it to start vibrating on me and I want to take out some of those ridges And the way down.
have got it taken care of. Should have. Oh, much, much, much better. Much, much better. Great. All right, now we can proceed. Just continue on. Just wash, rinse, and, re and repeat. That looks, that looks pretty spot on to me. Now we can continue on just taking, working the center out. In fact, I'm going to uh, turn the camera off, bring you around to a different vantage point so you can see the inside uh, just a bit better. Now you can see. So all we've done, we've gone from this corner all the way down to this point. These edges are parallel from end to end or pretty close to it, as close as I'm going to get it. Uh, well, what we're working on now is getting to the bottom of this. Now one thing, well, we'll do that in a minute. So we're good, let's work on the bottom. tool rest a bit that was great for the outside edge but for the center part we got to drop it way on down spin around double check make sure we're not we didn't move something out of a kilter now stop right here I know how thick my wing is I know how thick it is right here but I also know I've got a foot down here and then I've got a recess I don't know how thick it is in that recess now there's a couple of tricks um, for instance if I can find my here they are my thickness calipers I can go down between the jaws of the chuck there we go and I can see right there that that's about perfect that is about perfect 
which I'll be happy with that. I want to take one little cleaning pass. It, it seems to get shallower right, right there. So I can take one more little pass and I'll be fine. Um, I was going to show you something else, but I don't need to. I was able to do that. Uh, I had just enough gap in my jaws. If you don't have a gap in your jaws and you're doing a recess, you need a depth gauge like this one. This is block goes between the headstock or goes against the headstock on the ways. And then this piece goes on the ways and you come up and put the end of this dowel up against the well, let me show you. Let me move my tool rest and I'll just show you. Put that piece, this plain piece, up against the headstock. Put that on the way. Slide it up until it touches the, the piece that you're turning. And you can know how thick it is by the gap in between here. Because this piece is the, the same width as the distance between the headstock and the end of the uh, chuck jaws. However... This was made for a different set of uh, different chuck and different set of jaws. And so it's not quite wide enough. I almost went through my one good one because um, I was going by that. It, I, I was very fortunate. So I've got to cut another, another uh, measuring block, gauge block, so that I can know for a fact exactly where the end of my jaws are. However, I was just able to go between the jaws. I know how thick it is. It's this thickness right here. That's how, how, how much it is. And so uh, I'm gonna take just a slight little cleaning pass right here. And I'm gonna start, I'm gonna start right about here. Right there is where I'm gonna start. And all I'm doing is, is smoothing this out and then we'll sand it. Oop. Glad I spun that. Okay. Double check where I want to be. Yeah, just from right there down. We'll stop there and sand. Hmm. I'm gonna sand this uh, with my drill. I'll I'll put sandpaper on a on a block and do all four of these edges, particularly the two end grains. The other sides, the two sides are not bad, um, but I want to get rid of this sharp edge, especially on the inside. Smooth out these corners just a little bit. So I'll bring you back here in just a couple of minutes.
sanding is for the most part complete. I still got a little bit on that bottom. You'll remember I still got the recess to clean up. But I am right now done with this piece. The beauty of doing a recess, one of the beauties is once you get the top done, you're basically done. One of the things uh, I could have done and should have done, I guess, was to go ahead and finish this, this uh, bottom, this recess off. Just double checking, yeah, I got pretty thin. Um, my little grooves there, uh, you can see through. But I, So I need to get that, uh, that gauge block that goes from the headstock out to the face of this chuck uh, made so that I can have a very positive uh, understanding of where my bottom is. I need to turn this back around. I've put a little pad on the inside um, and put it up here. I'll, I'll hold it with my uh, tail stock with the cone center on it and uh, work this tenon down. Um, and I sure wish, oh, I just saw some scratches. See if I can get those out by hand. I don't know where those came from. <coughs> Excuse me. So I guess um, as I'm working out my pro my protocol, my process of turning these, um, I continue to to improve it. And so what I need to do when I'm working on that backside, I need to do it to completion um, I don't need to fool around and and uh, have to come back to it I, I need to be able to have it done I'm not doing any finish on the lathe um, let's go to heavier grit that was 150 grit and I can't feel those scratches but I can certainly see them so I may have to go back to 60 grit even um, what I was saying was that that if I could go ahead and have that backside totally finished, sanded everything, I won't have to come back to it. All I have to do is oil it then. Um, all these plates are going to get a, a start with oil, a walnut oil. I use, you can use any brand, there's several brands out there. I use the Mahoney brand. Um, got some that my brother-in-law gave me that is really a walnut oil for salad uh, salad dressing and I think that'll be okay I think it'll work fine um, I want to check it just a little closer because the can does say that once it's open it needs to be refrigerated and that tells me that may be something I don't want to use. I do not want to put something on a on a plate or a bowl, either one, that could cause somebody to have an allergic reaction. The Mahoney's has been uh, cooked. It's been heated to a high temperature to kill all of that protein that causes allergies for people with nut allergies. And then it's filtered. The filtering process the what it is intended to do and what it's believed to do is to take those proteins completely out so they've been killed off and then they're filtered so I'm not too worried about the Mahoney's brand but this salad bowl wanted oil uh, salad dressing walnut oil leaves me a little concerned on these plates. I am going to come back uh, after they have a chance to cure. I'll let them cure after applying two, three, four coats of this oil. I will come back and run them through the Bill Buff system. And so I don't think it's going to be an issue at all. Um, I just want to be sure I would eat off of it, but I don't have a nut allergy. And I would hate to ask a friend who has nut allergies to try it for me because 
if they have bad enough allergies, nut allergies, they end up quite often uh, in the ER for a few hours uh, being treated. Steroids, antihistamines, all of that kind of thing. Breathing treatments quite often. I would hate to put somebody through that process intentionally. In fact, I would never ask someone intentionally, uh, someone I know who has a nut allergy to try, here, try this out, see if you react. No, not gonna do it. You know one lady, she's a nurse, and from time to time, one of the other nurses don't seem to care and will cause her to have an, an allergic reaction. All right, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to pad this up. Put my block in here. This is a block that I use quite often. Uh, for taking tendons and the like off. It's dished out. It's curved around here. Nice soft curve. I will put a piece of shelving material on there. I don't want to split that so I'm going to break it up just a touch. Hopefully this is my quills long enough. Don't want to press too hard because as I get smaller, I don't want it, the, that tin and what's left of it to split out. But I do want to hold it up in there. I don't want the wood to spin. There we go. Get my tool rest in the right spot. Give it a little spin. It is clear, no problems there. This is at 850, I'm gonna slow it down. Here's 500, that's not bad. Normally I use my bowl gouge but I'm going to just simply use my detail gouge which is a spindle gouge sharpened to a real fine point maybe you can see that just going to work that down That's what I was afraid of. It's that little nub split. It wasn't enough to hang on, so it, it broke out. But because I'm going slow, no damage done. We're in great shape. Good shape for the shape we're in, as my grandfather used to say. Good shape for the shape we're in. get my shim fell out I think I've talked about that I know I've talked about that several times my my uh, tail stock doesn't line up exactly with my head stock and so I have a little shim it's not anything more than some some aluminum foil I've, I've got several layers folded up and it, it makes it perfect so everything lines up just exactly right all right, there it is. One seven inch square plate. 
Um, I've got some sanding to do on this on this uh, inside this recess. Finished sanding the nub down, make this nice and smooth, and I'll put my maker's mark in here uh, as usual. Several coats of walnut oil, and then the Bill Buffing system where I finish with a carnauba wax that'll give it a real nice shine. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed this. I, uh, I'm still working on the process. It's not perfect yet. Uh, you probably saw two or three things you would do differently. If you want to, feel free to go ahead and, and share those, those ideas with me. Uh, I may incorporate them. I may not. Uh, you know, because we all have to do things the way it makes us comfortable. This is the way I'm comfortable right now. I'm still working on it, but it, uh, it's coming along, and uh, I'll have fewer uh, backups and, and punts and all those kinds of things uh, as we go along. I've got, uh, I don't know what, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12. I've got 15 more I can make and intend to make. And so, uh, uh, you know, I, the process I'm sure will change in those 15. It should get easier. It should get faster. But in, as of right now, this is the process. Uh, if you're saying to yourself, uh, you know, why didn't you show any of the sanding? Well, I've got a sanding video out there. Uh, if you look on the, in my playlist, you'll find uh, a, a sanding, you know, nothing but sanding. I think that's called smoothing out the bumps. I did it a couple weeks ago. Um, so anyway, if you don't mind, if you'll hit the, the like or the dislike button, uh, whichever one is, ap is appropriate. If you dislike it, go ahead and hit the thumbs down button. If you like the video, hit the thumbs up button, please. Um, and either way, if you'll leave me a comment, tell me what you like, tell me what you didn't like. Um, if you tell me what you don't like and you hit the thumbs down button, that will help me uh, immensely. Uh, so I know what to do better the next time so that it's more enjoyable for you. Um, hit the subscribe button if you, if you don't mind. It doesn't cost you anything. It helps me tremendously. Um, hit the if you want to be notified when I put new content on, onto uh, Facebook. Uh, go ahead and hit that bell. That bell is a notification button, and uh, if you hit that, YouTube will let you know every time uh, when I have put new content up on the internet. So uh, feel free to hit those buttons. I tell you what, if you know somebody who uh, is a turner or who just enjoys watching turning, you think they might like this project, feel free to share this share with them. Get that share button and it'll let you uh, go down and copy the link and then you can put that in a message, Facebook, uh, Instagram, TikTok, wherever you want to put it. Uh, that will help me as well. So uh, I want to thank you. Oh, I've been forgetting to say, um, we're at... Uh, we're almost to two set. Excuse me. We're almost to 475 subscribers at the moment, and I have promised that when we get to 500, we'll have a giveaway. I will turn a, a, a sizable bowl or plate or something. I'll turn something nice. Uh, I'll do my very best on it, and uh, it'll go to a winner. So uh, we'll have that drawing sometime after I get to 500. I'll make the announcement when we hit 500, and shortly thereafter, uh, I'll do a video turning the piece and we'll have the drawing for it as well. So uh, subscribe, get your friends to subscribe. It will help tremendously, and you could be in the drawing for that 500 uh, subscriber giveaway. I thank you for being with me. This is Doug at Wood Spun Round. Until we get to meet again, I hope you're able to spin them round.